Excellent. So uh, we've got a nice mixed group. Um, we've got uh, two folks working on their undergraduate degrees, and uh, Robert's working on his master's. So I'll try to um, sort of balance both. Again, uh, the good thing about effective general article teaching is that it takes you through um, any sort of whether in an undergrad, whether you're doing professional development out in your work, or whether you're at the uh, at the graduate level. <laughs> wow, Megan! Just um, I hope that uh, we're not you still have an eye on that traffic though. <laughs> so um, um, get it off if you need to. I won't be offended. <laughs> That's good. Good. Great. So I think um, you know the number one thing, just to get started. This is like even before you do your research, um, you want to pick a topic that you care about. Um, most uh, assignments, you know, you do have some choice, uh, and if there's something that is happening that you're you know you're working part time or something that's going on that you can relate to an assignment. Let your prof know about it. Uh, most times, if they think that you are going to relate it to some real life experience or you're bringing you know personal passion to your work, they're more than happy for you to do that. So definitely um, make the connections between the topic that you're working on and um, your life or your work. Uh, of course, uh, Robert. In terms of your, you sort of have the luxury as a graduate student to actually choose your own research topic that you will be devoting uh, most of your life to. So uh, I'm, I'm sure you can appreciate the need to really care about the topic. Um, of course, you want to do a little bit of. Um, planning. Um, you want to uh, make space with, have a home. It can be a, a virtual home, a digital home in terms of, you know, you've got your um, OneDrive through um, the Mount uh, Microsoft uh, program, which is amazing that we now have this, uh, all the Microsoft products are free and space with OneDrive, or whether you're a, a Google Drive user, you want to make sure that you've got um, a space virtual or rail in terms of a desk um, that you carve out for, for doing your work. Um, and the other thing you want to think about, I mean, sometimes we just um, choose our assignments or we have our research topic and we just dive into it. But it's always good to have those l lateral thinking skills. So you want to keep creative, uh, keep those problem solving skills so that if you run into roadblocks or you know, you're just not finding quite the right uh, articles that match your topic, sometimes you can be creative about how you search about what you use. So you, you definitely, even before you start, you want to think about what do I care about? Do I have space virtually, physically? And sort of keeping creative about it all. Um, one thing just to, uh, I'd like to chat about too is that it's good to know what isn't good research and what isn't uh, a good research paper. If you're simply gathering and reorganizing what you find, um, it means that it's lacking analysis. That might have been good when you're at, at high school, but at the university level, it needs to be deeper. You you need to gather and organize, but you need to go beyond. Uh, so you really, as you're you're finding things, you want to be thinking about. Um, you know, what's the analysis, and that you've been thinking about the question. So even, it's good to think of that from the beginning, even if you find things, because as you look for articles, you know that you're not just finding things to, to um, be able to reorganize it and put it back in slightly different order. You want to be choosing the articles um, and books in some cases that are going to help you think about the topic and then that's going to 
to um, to really help you with your final output. And of course, the other characteristic of inadequate uh, research is it's boring. So if it's boring you, it's going to be boring your, your professors and your readers. So again, you want to, to keep that um, creative and interesting, make it interesting. Um, I'm not, of course, going to go too much into thesis statements and research questions. Um, that's more in the, the writing of the paper. Other than to say that um, what is helpful is to know that you have questions to answer. So, you know, in terms of your topic, um, you want to to think about like generate a couple of questions that you're going to be using when you're doing your research to answer and that will help you find um, good research because uh, it, it'll help guide you, it'll give you something to aim for if you're, you're asking your own questions about your research topic. And again, when I say questions, it's as simple as the who, where, when, what, how um, that uh, you just want to ask about the the assignments that you get and the topics that you get. That helps you get a little bit deeper and um, and gives you a sort of angle to search for and to be able to spot the the journal articles that are good. Um, so I know that Robert's going to be soon working on his main research project. Um, for the others of you, are you working on any projects this term or are you um, just more have sort of uh, assignments that you're working on? Great, and um, I'm just curious, uh, Megan, what's the, uh, do you know the topic that you'll be writing on as yet? Uh, and sometimes that could be the most challenging when you've got uh, the, the free range to, to choose. And again, I think that's even more important for you to think about what really interests you and then to, to ask these other supplementary questions about it. And uh, Robert, do you know what your your topic is or are you exploring it right now? Uh, yes, uh, I know what my topic is. So briefly, it is, it's a qualitative assessment of public relations theory. So it looks back, it's also a historical dimension. It looks back to, say, the mid to late 70s. And uh, I, what I'm interested in doing is tracing uh, uh, how public relations theorists or, or theorists generally have, uh, have viewed public relations through the lens of what you might call systems theories, either, either general system theory or uh, other theories that one might term as being system th theories. Sorry, I just realized I had my mic off, so um, my apologies for the long period of silence there. Uh, what I was just, first I thanked uh, Megan and uh, Robert for sharing their topics with us. Um, and then sort of going on to the actual search, uh, of course the goal is to find everything but avoid the junk, just get the relevant stuff. However, we tend to get relevant but not enough or lots, but includes some uh, junk as well. And I was just wondering, when you're searching, um, which end of the spectrum are you getting? Are you getting the not enough, or are you getting the too much?
Yeah, um, it, it might depend on your topic. Can you think of the most recent one that you've had to, uh, had to search for? Well? Yes, I bet. Yes. Great. So I will uh, give some uh, pointers that might be able to help. So, uh, okay. Oh, just a few other things uh, along the that can help, and this is more with the uh, assignment take. Um, Always make sure you know what your your professor wants. Um, I've seen lots of undergraduate students end up with a a C, even though they worked really hard. And the difference between you know why that happened was that although they worked hard, they didn't follow what the assignment said. Um, so they may not have gotten what was required or the type of articles that. Um, for, or the number of articles or the types of articles, uh, you always want to check and see what's required. What is your professor looking for? Do they want peer-reviewed articles? Have they specified any particular data pieces that they want you to search? So definitely at the undergraduate level, that you want to be really clear about what's being asked for. Um, again, in terms of being able to uh, judge what you're seeing when you do your search, um, these are just some questions that might um, might help with that. You you want to um, sort of again remember that you're working at the university level now, so you you want to make sure that the content, the language, the audience is all done for at uh, the research level and for the university level. Um, so if it's reading way too easy and way too simply, you might just want to make sure that it's at sufficient depth that you need at, uh, for an undergraduate um, assignment. Um, and again, this is more, these slides are more for the, the undergraduates in the audience. Um, being able to, to um, recognize articles and research articles can really help save some time. Uh, you'll notice that uh, they always, or often, they'll contain an abstract, which is just a, a, a sort of summary of what the article contains. You'll also notice that they they will include the credentials of the of the authors, and then at the um, at the end of the the article, they're going to include references. So those are things that you want to look for um, as as being a good quality um, articles when you're finding things. Um, so again, I know that several of you are business students. Um, sometimes you're just looking for um, just company profiles, company information. Uh, and again, you, that's going to be useful for some of your assignments. And you can easily recognize, OK, it's, uh, you know, it, they usually say what they are. And you need to be able to tell the difference between the, you know, the very good company information that you need for your assignments and then the sort of research articles that you might be called upon for your papers. Okay, so now if you're, you're doing a, a research um, paper, you want to think about, okay, where are the best places to look? Um, there are some databases that are going to give you a little bit of everything. And they're really good for that sort of multidisciplinary um, sort of approach. So I know, um, Robert, for instance, if you're looking for things outside of traditional public relations um, sources, you may want to try some of those multidisciplinary um, 
uh, databases. Uh, if you're looking specifically within a particular area, so for instance, uh, Megan, you're going to be doing, you know, uh, a research brief for, for accounting, you're going to be looking more at the business databases, because then you're getting right to the, um, the database that's going to give you really relevant uh, information for what you're looking for. And I'm going to show you where on the uh, library site you can get to this, these sources, because they will save you lots of, of time. Um, and uh, they're just going to give you a quick uh, screenshot, and then I'll actually just take you across to the, um, the live site. So we have a A to Z databases uh, page, and on there, We've also sort of subdivided them by um, subjects, and you can see too that you can see what kind of information. So you can say, all right, I want articles, and I want it in a particular um, sort of subject area. And now I'm just going to demonstrate that on the site, just one second. Great, so on the, um, the library homepage, uh, you can see I'm just scrolling down a bit. Um, many students um, will search for information here. Again, it's a fine place to get started. You'll get both books and journal articles. But we want to kind of go in this workshop a little bit deeper into being able to, to get into the specific types of databases that are going to be related to your areas. So that's where the, there's two ways of getting there. You can either do the databases A to Z, and this is where we could say, all right, we, the type of uh, resource we want is just the article databases, and then again, we can choose the business, which I think will be good for Megan's uh, accounting, or for um, Robert, you know, you'll want to, to check out the um, the public relations um, guide um, or databases. And you can see we've got the uh, the communications and mass media complete is used quite a lot in public relations. And of course, just because of the nature of public relations, uh, they also use the business source uh, premier database as well. And then we always list other other databases relevant to that area of, of study. Um, the other way of, of getting to the databases would be, oops, sorry, I meant to go back to the Mount Library. On the, the library homepage, you can also go to the uh, research guides. And then as you scroll down, we've just taken the main areas uh, taught at the Mount and um, sort of provided sort of some subjects or research guides to them. So again, you know, business administration, you can see that we've uh, pulled together the resources that are going to be the most useful to you. And again, with all your different areas, you can, you can go to those. So that's a little bit about how you can find the, um, the, the databases that are going to help you. So I'm just going to switch back to the, uh, the slides for a bit, and then we'll be back in here to do some uh, practice searches. So again, um, once we get into the uh, to searching, you really want to identify your main concepts. I think one of the uh, most common errors that I see are uh, that people search the way that they would search in Google in terms of just typing in the long sentence or a long phrase. Um, with these databases, you'll be a lot more efficient if you pull out sort of the keywords that you uh, 
that you need to find out about. So you, again, you need to sort of think about what it is you're looking for. So for example, if there's a the research question is what are the effects um, of toy advertising on children, where we're pulling out advertising toys children. And then the, the other thing you want to do is start thinking about what are some other words that might relate to all of these, because the, the trick with the databases is that, you know, these companies have invested a lot of time putting information into these databases, but they often tag it with specific terms, and the terms that you're using and typing in may not match the terms that they've categorized things with. So you want to, to sort of brainstorm and, and have a, a variety of terms that sort of mean the same thing so that you can sort of try them all and find out which one works best for that database. The other thing to keep in mind is that terms can change between databases. Uh, I remember once, um, I think they were looking for, you know, like social skills, and then the term ended up being, um, it was, it's actually, it's slipping my mind now, it was something that you would not even have thought that they meant social skills, um, sort of developmental parameters or something like that, um, and it was only by sort of using lots of different terms that we were able to tease out what the term was being used to categorize that type of, of information. So you definitely want to spend some time on this brainstorming. Um, the other thing that's uh, useful to know is that the databases, uh, the, you connect your terms by using and or 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 not. So, for instance, if you use, um, you're looking for children and advertising, you, you only want those articles where both of those terms uh, occur. So, when you use the and, it's, it's looking in sort of this little sweet spot where the articles that, that contain both children and advertising are. So I have to skip there. Um, with the or, it's again when you've you know you've brainstormed and you've you found words that are are similar and that you want both. So you want both the category of children and adolescents. That's where you're going to use the or, so that you're getting sort of both categories. Sometimes um, the not is important too so that if you, you're looking for advertising, but you're only really interested in what's sort of on television or what's on the web, you're not interested in anything that appeared in print, then that's where the not comes in, so that you, you get the advertising, but you don't get anything. Even if it was advertising about print, you're not getting it, because you're, you're excluding everything that, um, that even has the word print on it. So again, depending on what you're searching from, this can actually help you out a lot, uh, especially when you're finding you're getting a lot of um, false um, results that are, you know, it's got some of the words you want, but there were other things that you didn't want, um, the not can really help you out. So the question being is, does it matter what order you put these in? And um, just what your thoughts on this, uh, you know, here, um, and I'll show you this live in a second, but you can see here I'm searching for privacy, and I'm interested in privacy with, uh, with Facebook or Twitter. So does it matter if I have how I enter it in? Do if, does it matter if I say privacy and Facebook or Twitter, or does it matter that the or is written in the line? Just, just want to hear your thoughts on that.
All right? I'm getting silent, which so means I may have lost you. Uh, just to say that it does matter. Um, you can see here that um, if you're combining your ors, it's better to have it on, on one line. Um, you can see that when we use the or on a separate line, we ended up with like almost 8,000 results. When we combined it on one, you can see the results are way more manageable at 353. And why that happened was that when we kept the the or together here, it it sort of correctly got us everything with privacy and then everything that either had either both or either one of these. Uh, whereas when we had the or as an extra, it grabbed everything on Twitter. And that's why it completely threw off the our search. So again, that's one thing to keep in mind when you're when you're doing your, your searches. So actually I sort of wanna to give you a chance to try this yourself. So I'm just gonna go across to um, I'm just gonna share my window one second. And of course, when you um, you click on the the database, you need to um, to sign in with your Mount uh, login. So the same one that you use for Moodle. And we're just going to take um, sort of uh, Megan's example. Um, you're doing that uh, accounting um, paper, and you're again because you've you've already identified sort of the main areas that you want to look at. And again, this is where you want to think of those other words. So you might want to think, okay, maybe all like public sector, for instance. So this is where you sort of get into um, to doing a little bit of that brainstorming to, to go a little bit broader. And it, it's still very broad, so that's where you ask those why, when, where questions to try and think what angle do you want to take on this. And again, you notice that I put the or here rather than here so that it continues to combine these two words, not throw in public sector as a whole new area to get everything on. So you definitely will want to, to add some new more words here, and you'll also want to um, to add. You can add as many rows here as you need to, to fine tune things. Because I imagine um, Robert again, because your topic is a bit more complex, you may need to to do a bit more um, sort of. Uh, searching here because I know you said um, a particular type of theory you might have different examples of those theories that you might need to bring together with with the with a different sort of string of, of ors. So you you'll definitely want to um, play around. And I'm just seeing uh, Megan's uh, suggestion that she wanted to add um, budgets as well. And again, um, I mean, this is your area, so you'll also want to to keep thinking of of other terms, other angles. The other thing that can really help, you can see here on the left hand side how we've got the refined results. You want to scroll down there, and again, you can see that one. You can start saying, okay, I want my my scholarly. Um, also, we've got the publication times, and this I'm really glad, uh, Robert, that you had talked about you wanting things from an earlier time as well, because most students tend to just use this to find the most recent, let's say the last five years, 
but you can also use this to find things that may have been uh, written or published in the 80s, may have been written or published in the 70s. So you can use um, these time ones by doing separate searches for different sort of publication periods. And then if it's still too wide, you can see that the subject area here can also help you um, see what other subject terms have been tagged and allow you to sort of uh, explore smaller subsets. So what I'd like you to do now is just um, open up uh, on your, open up a browser, go to one of the databases and try doing a search on, on you know, a topic that's relevant to an assignment what you're doing now or if like uh, Megan and Robert you have a specific area, play around with one of those searches and then um, I'm hoping that one of you will be uh, brave enough that you'll actually, I can give you the mouse and you'll actually be able to show us what you've done and what you've found. So I'm just going to give you about uh, four minutes to um, to try that out and I'm just going to set the timer on uh, on Blackboard and it'll give us a little, uh, a bell will ring uh, when our four minutes uh, are over. So I'll just start the timer now. Great, so that was just our uh, our bell. <laughs> um, did everyone, did anyone try it out to see um, what their searches were like and if you have any questions, um, 
based on your searches. Okay, that's good to know, Megan. Yes, and please definitely let me know how it goes. Um, just wondering, Robert, were you able to try any searches, or do you have any um, specific questions about things that you, if you've tried searches, searches before, what you think may have been missing from your searches? Um, yeah, I, I've, uh, I've tried uh, some search uh, searches before, and I tried some here. Um, so where I'm at is I've got from from previous uh, courses I've done, and, and obviously putting my proposal together, I've done um, uh, searches for literature. I guess what I'm interested in making sure that I do is um, I don't that I don't just um, what in in public relations the what I've noticed is that there's a very U.S. or North American dominant. Um, Leaning in the in the literature, so so there's three or four dominant journals, and what I'm interested in making sure I do is look not only in those, but in other journals like Journal of Mass Communication, things like that. So I'm so I I wouldn't just get the the articles that are most common. I'm interested in breadth of articles, not just depth of one type of article. So um, I'm wanting to make sure I I cast the net fairly wide. And then from that, select uh, you know a variety of articles that reflect that breadth of. Uh, okay, sorry, Robert, you cut out a little bit there, but I think I know what you're you're getting at. Um, well, one good thing is that. Uh, these the databases, uh, of course, um, cover they each cover a certain range of journal articles. So you'll see up at the uh, top here um, the the publications where you can see there's that little publications link, and that actually tells you exactly which journals you're searching within this. I mean, of course, there are oh. thousands. But again, you can sort of um, sort of look at which the, you know, you can, with the subject and description, you might be able to see, OK, in business source, um, which are the ones that are related to, to your area, um, what's being searched there. So you know what you're covering with the search. And then with the, the same thing, you can go back to your uh, research guide. I should just go down to the uh, the public relations one here for you, and then in the communication and mass complete again. You can see you can get into the publications, and by by looking for the the terms that sort of describe kind of your area what you're sitting from. That will let you know what you are, <laughs> what you're getting. Um, now, in terms of trying to find what you're not getting, uh, on the, I'm just going to open up uh, to get to the, um, on the, the Mount Library. Again, this is just looking at what we have at the Mount. But you can also, you know, search, see, the journals, you know, approach from the journals, see what journals uh, the monk subscribes to um, in your particular areas. Uh, public relations is a hard one to just sometimes get into, but you can just from the journal then go to the um, journal and search from there. Uh, and, um, and please note that the uh, librarians at the Mount, you can book an appointment, a 45-minute appointment, and 
you know, we can sit down and, and take a look at some of these things. And um, and that's available for everyone, that appointment. So if any of you are struggling with a, a particular research uh, topic or not finding quite the information you need, um, definitely you can book an appointment and you can sit down with someone and we can brainstorm how to find what it is you're looking for. Um, the the other thing that's just I mean that's, does that kind of get at what you were struggling with, uh, Robert? Okay, great. Yeah, so this um this little uh, top piece here, and I am I'm just going to to uh, close out of here, and um, I just want to go back into the business. Uh, one just because I know that we've got several business students here, so you can see, you know, um, Robert might have been interested in exploring exactly which journals he's getting with his searches. Um, I know for a lot of um, business students as well, uh, with your assignments, you may not need the research articles, but you may need different other types. Um, and you can see here the you can look up here for company profiles. Um, and then over here, you can see we have a thesaurus, and the thesaurus is kind of like a dictionary, sort of, um, it gives you those other terms. So again, um, for Megan's topic, when you were looking for um, government, because you wanted, you were interested in accounting and government, you can see, okay, what are the terms related to uh, to government, um, so then you start seeing, okay, government agencies, government corporations, um, public spending, so it's a good way of um, being able to uh, get some of that brainstorming help. And, uh, and again, with the databases, this, I know I've been sort of focused more on the research articles, but I'm aware that some of the other assignments may be looking for different types of information as well. So I just wanted to do that. So if you're looking for industry profiles, uh, let's say we're looking at um, clothing, for instance. You can see when I'm scrolling down, We've got source types. So again, if you're doing a research paper, you, you're going to want the academic journals. But if you're a business student and you're doing another type of research, you know, maybe you're in marketing, you can see you can get market research reports here. Or you can get the SWOT analysis here. Um, or you can get the industrial world for uh, for information on on the you know apparel or clothing industry, so again, these databases have lots of information, both uh, academic as well as professional information, and it's by knowing that you know. The, the searching the terms up at the top here is just the starting. It's then knowing how to sort of refine your your search, uh, and then um, actually getting into the article. That's where you can really get a lot of uh, sort of bang for your buck, you know, and time. I think like the most important thing is that you use your time efficiently, so that you're not um, having to do a lot of searching and getting all this. Uh, uh, irrelevant information or low quality information that you have to sort through. You want to pick the right terms here and then use the right sort of limits and, and filters here that you can spend all your time actually doing the reading for it. So that's a little bit what I sort of pointed out there, that you can limit to um, the 
just the peer review, or you can also set your time just to, you know, search the last uh, couple of years. Or for other people, it would be actually being able to um, to search the uh, time periods. So, you know, with Robert uh, needing to search uh, like particular different decades. And of course, that's on just on the uh, left hand side here. So we're just about ten minutes ago. Just a little recap. I mean, one thing that you definitely need to keep in mind is that um, we've got uh, a lot of information in the the databases. And you want to be able to recognize what's your research database, oh, sorry, research article versus like a company report. Um, when you are searching, you want to really think about what it is you're looking for. And then do a lot of brainstorming uh, of different keywords and, and things related to your topic. You want to do that lateral thinking uh, so that if you come to a dead end with one thing that you'll you'll be able to find it by using another term or another word. I know another example we had, um, you know, if students were looking for Caritas Day at the Mount. Of course, Caritas Day is so specific to the Mount that they'll never find a journal article on that. But if they looked for volunteerism and student groups involved in volunteerism, then they'll find lots of information of sort of projects that are like what happens on Caritas Day at the at the Mount. So again, you want to, um, to be very creative and to do a lot of brainstorming. And then of course, once you actually put in those keywords, you want to do those effectively by choosing the right databases and also using the options and the filters to your best advantage. Oh, for sure, Robert. I'll just um, I'll just choose that one second. I'm just going to bring it back up. Great, and uh, just one thing, I just noticed there's a little X on your mic. I'm just going to see if, can you, do you have access to your mic again? So is this the, uh, what you're referring to? Yep. So this is um, their attempt to kind of do more like a, a Google search, where you can just put in a, a big sort of block of text, and then the database will try and pass out what it is you you mean by it. Um, we tested it out, and we we haven't found it to be as effective as using the uh, the Boolean search, which is the ands and ors. Um, the algorithms just aren't as good as Google's is at this point. Um, so it's, it's not a search that we r recommend. Um, by all means, experiment with it. Um, it may depend on the topic a bit. Uh, but again, we haven't found it as effective as pulling out those mean concepts and using the different concepts in the different boxes. But any other questions about the, uh, the databases? Yeah, good, good. I'm glad uh, it's helpful, Anita. Again, it's a really uh, quick way of getting the uh, academic and professional sources that would be related to your uh, your assignments. 
Um, I should just uh, realize that um, I'm just going to uh, do a quick little search here. Um, I was very focused on uh, the search from in terms of getting the results and then narrowing down your results. Uh, of course, at some point you actually want to get to the actual article. Um, you just you click on here just to get a bit more information. And you can see that you should give you a little um, abstract that just gives you a bit more information. And then on the left hand side, this is where you get to the, the full text of the article. Which of course you can also, uh, on the right hand side here, you can see there's a little envelope. You can um, email it to yourself so that you get an email copy, uh, sorry, a PDF copy in your email. And then um, these little boxes too, there's also, it'll do the, uh, the APA um, citation for you. With these, you have to check them because sometimes there's errors. Uh, you can see here, this shouldn't be all capitalized like this for, for APA. So it's not always perfect, but at least you're in the role of editing rather than doing things um, from scratch. Great, and just talking about APA, just to let you know that um, coming up next in the, our workshops is um, the workshop about APA and, and specifically using our RefWorks to help with that. So I, I hope that I'll see some of you for, for that session. And again, this uh, session was just like a quick little introduction to let you know some of what's available for you. Uh, we definitely are here to help and are here to help you use these tools better. We sort of want to coach you so that you become very efficient and independent uh, researchers. So please contact us if you have uh, any um, questions at all about, um, about searching. Again, it always improves with practice. I'm sure uh, Robert can attest to that. And, um, because he's been doing a lot of searching with his uh, his uh, his uh, thesis, and um, just I, this is session was part of the learning passport. So if you need a passport signed, um, I'm not on campus at the at the mount right now, but you can come tomorrow. I'll be there, or next week. Um, and if you're a distance student and you need your passport signed, you can email me to um, to get that done. So any other uh, questions as we uh, sort of uh, draw to close at seven o'clock? Oh, glad, Robert. I'm 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 glad it was helpful. <laughs>